Hope is always waiting for us to see her. But sometimes she comes in a form that we don't recognize. And sometimes she comes in a way that we don't want to see. Recently, a beautiful woman I know told me she doesn't want her gray hair to show because she wants to keep her vibrancy as long as she can. I had no reply. I wanted to shout out and yell, my life is no less vibrant because I have gray hair. That's a lie. It's a standard, a way that we hold ourselves back from our truly beautiful gifts, a way that we walk away from the wisdom and the honor of walking so many days on this earth. We control ourselves. And while coloring our hair is a, simply a choice, it's something that can also be used to hide. And I don't want that anymore. My friend Fern shone brightly until the age of 104, and my mentor Carol is 90 and a vibrant example. And I know that I am too, half their age, gray hair and all. I sat with my friend's comment for a few weeks, and today as I read about Catherine Switzer and Roberta Binge Gibb, they ran the Boston Marathon 50 years ago. In fact, Roberta ran it first without a number, but Catherine knew that a number was important. She knew that her running was, was for a purpose greater than that that she recognized at the time. We do not need to lose our vibrancy. And as we are speaking right now, she is running. Catherine is running that Boston Marathon 50 years later. So it is a choice that we lose our vibrancy. And it happens when we coast or when we forget, forego our needs for the needs of others. And we assume that we're doing that for their benefit, but truly we are the living example. We are the example of what we believe in the world, not our words. And we hold our busyness with a badge of honor and we stamp it with, I'm so busy, I would do this, I could do this. And our vibrancy, it's lost. In fact, it's not even lost. It's that it changes as we gain the wisdom to not be so hurried and open our minds. Because when we open our minds, our relationships changed. If we've been blessed with a long relationship with a partner, we know that that deepens. Our friends change. We are no longer satisfied with, with, with superficial things. We love them. It's fun sometimes, but we crave the depth. And when we're ready to receive it fully, everything changes. Only 50 years ago, women were told that their uterus would fall out and that they were too fragile to run. Catherine and Roberta were born to run. And so they trained and Catherine registered for the 1969 Boston Marathon. That's the year that I was born. <laughs> she registered as KV Switzer because even though there were no rules against women running and there was no box to check off that said male or female, the understanding was that women should not run and indeed that they could not run long distances. I wonder what boxes we're checking off that don't even exist. Well, Catherine ran. And while I'm not a runner, this is the good stuff that we women are made of. Her boyfriend protected her physically as she ran, and her mission alone was fierce. Even the men who tried to tear her number right off her body as she ran that Boston Marathon were perfectly placed so that we could see something in their actions that we didn't want to be there anymore. It reminds me of our recent presidential elections because the actions we make and the, the steps that we take, the words we used, they are not a reflection of the topic that we're discussing. They reflect the true state of our heart and that pain or the disgust or that perfectionism that's coming through. It's like cement bricks that we place around ourselves. It holds us back and it holds us away from that beauty that really awaits for us. Each release, each new understanding, each time we find kindness in the darkened world, it's like God places a key in our hand to honor our new understanding. That God-given key can open the next door, so we have to keep on walking forward, but we must use it and we must walk. Our lives have so many doors and many keys and truthfully, we never know what's on the other side. And that's why we walk in faith. 50 years later, gray hair and all, Catherine Switzer is running the Boston Marathon as I speak these words. Catherine Switzer will not be the last person to make a stand. Her gifts, her joy, she moved forward with that. And she will also not be the only person to find that her gifts and her joy are met with incredible resistance. 
Today we are called to remember that we are not alone, not in our hate and not in our love. We are both, but believe me, <laughs> I can't say this deeply enough. If we believe that we lose something important as we age, we are feeding it in our own soul. We are feeding the weakness because that which is fed grows. I believe that as we age, our wings expand and we grow stronger and we're set to sail. But we must do it and we must do it together. Join me as I reach my peak and I want to look over and smile at you as you're reaching yours. I'm Brooke Lyons and I'm inviting you to fly with me.